It's Nintendo Switch's fifth year anniversary. Or at least it is the day I'm filming this. I've wanted a Switch for quite a while now, and I decided why not buy a broken Switch and fix it. That way I can save a ton of money. It's a pretty big gamble. Hopefully it'll work out. So I found this Switch on eBay listed for $110 US, and the device is being sold as is. It won't charge or power on, and I've never actually fixed a Switch before, so we'll see how this goes. The seller also told me he'd purchase this off someone who claimed it stopped charging after a day. So right off the bat, you can kind of tell this has been used and abused. There's no kickstand and it's pretty scratched up. The screen does look okay though. It doesn't seem to be cracked at all or anything like that. There's some yucky yuckiness in there. I'll clean that out later. Because they said it wasn't charging, uh, my first guess would be the charging port. It looks a little bit damaged, but I'm not really sure if it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is see how much power the Nintendo Switch takes, just so we can get a better idea of what's actually wrong with it. So we're gonna plug it in, and we're going to plug in the Nintendo Switch. We're looking for spikes in the amps, and it looks like it's not taking any power at all. So this is going to be very, oh, I don't know what that means. It's taking 0 0.09 amps, which is ridiculously low for such a big device, but it's not turning on. So what I'm gonna do is open this up and see if there's any visible damage on the inside. And then from there, I'll continue my diagnosis. So we're gonna unscrew pretty much every screw we can see and get this back plate off. We're gonna be using the rubber band because the screw is stripped and we have to get this open. So this screw is completely stripped. We're just gonna to have to move around it until we can figure out how to get rid of it on screw. So this screw is also slightly stripped. Hopefully it doesn't strip like the last one. And thank God we got it off. I'm gonna try this one again with a couple prayers. We ask the Lord to unscrew the screw, amen. Easy. Now we're going to unscrew all the side screws. So we have everything unscrewed. By the way, before you guys jump to conclusions, I'm not Christian. That prayer was kind of a joke, kind of not. Glad it worked though. Now we can remove the back and there we go. It's kind of dusty in here. We're going to unscrew all the back plate screws. Unscrew. So, so far it doesn't look like anyone's been in here, which was one of my biggest fears. But, ooh, that's an interesting design. Based on what I'm looking at, we obviously have the battery, the fan, the heat sink, two speakers. This is the motherboard. This is detachable. I'm not sure if this is the hard disk or what, but you can actually take this off. So that probably leaves some space for upgradable storage. We have the two controller sensors. These basically just detect if the controller is on the device or not. This is the digitizer cable responsible for the actual touch. And that's about all I can see from the get go. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually just swap the battery. We're not necessarily gonna keep it swapped, but I wanna swap it just to rule out that it is the charging port. So these batteries usually come with some charge, and based on that, I can put the battery in the Nintendo Switch, try and turn it on. If it does turn on, I can rule out that it is probably not a battery problem, and it is indeed a charging port problem. If it doesn't turn on, then there's a few more diagnostics that we're gonna have to do. But we'll open up our new battery. And we're going to disconnect our old battery. There we go. I'm not sure how this battery is glued on, but we're about to find out. We're gonna add a little bit of ISO to this pry tool and just stick it under there. So I actually don't even have to pry off the battery. I don't know why I felt like I needed to. I can just plug it in without it actually being connected. So that's what we're gonna do instead. We have our new battery connected. Let's see if it works. We're gonna turn the device around and we're gonna hit that on button. So the new battery doesn't seem to work either. 
So because the battery wasn't the problem and the charging port most likely isn't the problem, we have to inspect the board under a microscope and find out which component is causing the problem. I did a bunch of research and apparently it's usually this component right over here. It's the charging IC and it's notorious for breaking on the switches. So we're going to take off the board. We're going to have a look at the area over here under the microscope, see if we can find any short circuits and possibly replace this component. Keep in mind, I have no clue how to micro solder. So everything I'm doing is kind of just me hoping for the best. So at this point, I'm looking for a short on one of these capacitors and I did find one and I did a lot of research and a short usually means that this black chip over here is faulty. It's the power IC. So right now I'm trying to remove it. And again, I have no clue what I'm doing and you're about to see what having no clue looks like. I knocked a cap off and are you guys ready for this? It's, 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 it's not good. It's, it's really not just, just wait for it. Are you still there? It's about to happen. Y yeah, can we get a can we get a rewind on that? So I began by knocking off one capacitor and I moved it back in place, but then I, I knocked off five. The one capacitor I probably could have done, but the five, I, I absolutely not. So I know when to give up and this was a point of no return, at least for me, someone who's inexperienced at micro soldering. I hit up my boy Marnix, who's very experienced at micro soldering, and he said he could do this without a problem. Phone repair guru, man, what have you done? What kind of solder did you use? Is that a jumper wire on the ground pad? You know what? Let me take a step back. I really can't say anything simply because this looks exactly like the work I did when I first began micro soldering back in 2018. You're on the right track. If there's one thing I learned on this journey, it is that perseverance is key. Keep going and you'll be doing CPU swaps in no time. The good news is that you diagnosed the device correctly. It did in fact require a new M9 charging control IC to be installed. I recently invited the phone repair guru to our training facility where we teach technicians to do this type of work. This message is for all his fans. Tell him to take me up on the offer. It will save him a ton of trouble. I wish I had someone back then to show me this stuff. Instead, I endured years of learning things the hard way. Anyway, my work here is done. Let's get this switch sent back to the phone repair guru so he can complete the repair. And here it is. Thank you, Marnix, for those uh, wonderful words. I did tell you to roast me, but I wasn't sure you actually would. Anyway, um, we're going to open this up and see what Marnix did. What do you guys think? Should I go see Marnix and learn how to micro solder the easy way? Or should I just keep doing what I'm doing? Let me know in the comments. Apparently those capacitors that I knocked off weren't that important and the device could still function without it. So theoretically I could have completed this repair, but I still have huge gaps in my knowledge of how to micro solder. It's kind of scattered because all I do is really just watch videos. We're going to take this board out and reinstall it into our switch and see if it works. And the Nintendo switch is on and working. We're gonna go play some Super Smash Bros. I'll probably end up winning because I'm great at it. Let me know if you guys wanna see my journey uh, learning how to micro solder. I definitely wanna keep you guys updated and teach you pretty much everything I know. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, click here to watch my last video and click here to watch the video that YouTube thinks you should watch. That is all for today. Hope you guys all have a nice day and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.